Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Nozzy, and FYI, it's Seven Days to Die. Now, Seven Days to Die is a mashup of a few game types, which seems to have taken its visual style from Minecraft and its zombie-themed action from the likes of DayZ. Now, Seven Days to Die is a combination of a voxel-based sandbox FPS survival horror role-playing game, which combines combat, crafting, looting, mining, exploration, and character growth all into one neat little package. And soon to come, as this is currently to be in in a kind of few versions of the game down the line, um, you can actually level up your character in the field you feel most comfortable. Now, the developers of this game called The Fun Pimps are aiming to incorporate XP and skill trees also. Now, essentially, this is from melee, guns, item recipes, and stealth. So you can actually level up e you know, any of those in the way that you like. For example, you can upgrade melee, you can become more proficient in using uh, many weapons to kill enemies faster. Now you can play the game in a few different modes, single player, multiplayer and co-op, and as of now I've only seen co-op and single player, hopefully the multiplayer servers will be up soon, uh, maybe in the second round of the beta. So let's crack on soap with the opinion, now from what I've played so far this game has been really 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 interesting. Personally I'm not a fan of games like Minecraft where you have that kind of open world feel, where you, you know you kind of craft things and it's very cool to craft you know, big buildings. I've not really been a massive fan of that. I have played Minecraft in the past, but it's never really been that addictive or that fun for me to play. This, however, has been really, really addicting. Aspects of FPS games merged with this has drawn, has totally drawn me in. The multitude of craftable items have given me the feeling I have only really had in DayZ, whereby finding and crafting something totally new gives you that little buzz. I mean, only in DayZ have I ever had that, where it's been super amazingly cool to find some insane weapon um, and you do kind of get the feel with you know of that within seven days to die which is which is totally awesome I'm a massive fan of that like Daisy the zombies in daytime are pretty easy to kill as they walk around and they're pretty easy to avoid as well now unlike Daisy at night these pesky little buggers are a real nightmare just like they should be essentially in a zombie game which some don't do very well like Daisy for example Thanks to the lunar cycle, the zombies go haywire, so inevitably they gain strength and speed. So you must make sure to build up your base and hold up, as when they are in horde mode and they're in your face, you're going to find things pretty damn tough. So pretty much the alpha so far. Uh, there's no real dynamic story generation, which they say they will have in the game as of yet, but it is something they're aiming to implement. Now this would make playing with friends a whole lot of fun. It kind of aims to guide you towards other survivors, better loot and undiscovered points of interest. Now this is why I feel it's not just another Minecraft clone where you kind of just create things in the world and go mining and explore underground. Bringing these characters in would give it a unique aspect, more so than what Minecraft offers, it's kind of slightly different. It would kind of give it a you know, exploratory feel whereby you have to actually go and achieve something by beating some boss or helping someone out within the world. Um, you know, that I think would be very very interesting and I think they really should build on that. Um, another thing I really do like is the actual survival aspect. So you have a food, stamina, water, and health meter, like in Daisy. Sorry, I know I keep smashing on about Daisy, but it is quite similar in that respect. Um, so essentially, that can get you into sticky situations where you actually don't have water. And running before the sun goes down, you definitely need to have water on you. As you can see here, I'm I'm bombing it back to my house, but to to try and get back before the sun goes down, so that the zombies don't actually come out and kill me. Because as soon as the sun goes down, they you know they sprint and they chase you. When your stamina bar goes down, you cannot run anymore. You can walk, but you cannot run, which pretty much means you're dead. And this is kind of exhilarating. You know, you really must actually really prepare when you go out. If you're going to be out at night, you have to have all these kind of things prepared so you're not going to die. Now, the crafting system is akin to other games you would have seen. And I do like the fact that when you craft something, it remembers it. So essentially, if you craft it once, it won't ask you to put in the kind of design within the grid. It will have the list on the right hand side that you can see here. You can click on it and it will pull all the items in. That I quite like is it kind of is a time saver. You know you've you've already crafted it once, you've figured out what goes where. So that I think again is is very nice. I, I appreciate that quite a lot. There is a creative mode which I haven't tried yet, but for those of you who have the patience and like to build worlds and share them with friends and build levels there are hundreds of block shapes, prefabs, and random generating tools, so you can actually really get your teeth stuck into those. Um, so, you know, like I said, if you like that, probably, you know, definitely give this game a go. You, you probably kind of find that quite fun. So, from what I've seen of the game so far, it's been a blast to play. 
This is essentially an early alpha version of the game, so they still have a lot to implement, but there is already so much to work from here. The second alpha stage will be implementing wall climbing enemies, more weapons, new flying enemies, more unique locations, block melting vomit, and improved multiplayer support. As of now, there isn't a huge amount. I think you kind of have to physically join another player's server, which I haven't actually done yet. Um, but in other games, for example Terraria, you have to use kind of a, a third party client to do so, which I find hugely frustrating. If you're going to play multiplayer, please put things within the game so it doesn't make it any more hassle for the player itself. I would really appreciate that. So all in all, Seven Days to Die is lining up to be a cracking game. Now due to the fun I've had, I will be creating an episodic series soon to come, so please look out for that, as I will be thoroughly enjoying making those videos for you guys. So thanks for watching people, this has been a show me for Seven Days to Die, and I will see you guys next time, and please quote in the comments if you want to see anything specific on this game, as I'll be more than happy to crack out those videos for you. But again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.